Hello and welcome back to The Real Music Talks. Today's guest is Emma, a reggae vocalist from Bristol. How are you doing, Emma? Hey, how are you doing? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad at all. Um, so for people that don't know you at all, how would you describe yourself and your involvement in the music industry? Um, well, I'm relatively new, I guess, to, to reggae, to, to reggae, live singing reggae. I've, uh, I've um, been living in Bristol for about six years now. And the reason I came to Bristol was because it's really obviously amazing for reggae music. Um, unfortunately, obviously, it's got a bit of a sad beginning because we get a, obviously it's built on on the slave trade. Uh, and but that does also mean that we have, you know, first, second generation, you know, uh, reggae singers that are really important to the scene. And, and I'm just here really to learn from that. You know, um, I bring it straight in there like I'm a white girl. I have white privilege. What, what are you doing singing reggae music? But I think that the message of like Rastafari and all that is that it's one love. It's for everyone. But I'm very, very careful to just just be learning and learning about it and not stepping on anyone's toes. But everyone's been really welcoming and brilliant about it, you know. But um, really, I think I came from a background of sort of jazz and blues um in london so i lived in london for like 21 years and it was beautiful singing jazz and blues mainly covers and stuff like that but it was very much centered on me and you know very much the spotlight on me and um and you know a lot of makeup and it's very high end and very precise and i just said as a joke to someone oh i just what i would really love to do is just like sing with my hood up in the next room that would be my perfect gig someone said you want to sing reggae music mate but um, I've always loved reggae music. My uh, uncle, uh, who's unfortunately died now, he's uh, he was Jamaican and he was married to my mother's sister in, in the 50s. So you can imagine that interracial relationship back then was really difficult for them. She was like a, like a crazy Scottish woman with like, you know, crazy red hair. But um, he used to make these mixtapes that literally lasted days and days, you know. And I remember going to all the Jamaican funerals and we had the like the real to real it was beautiful to just listen to that and i guess it was just ingrained in me i've always loved it as a genre i've always loved listening to it but i never ever thought that that was me i didn't see myself as a reggae mc because i wasn't kind of like out there and giving it all that which i saw a lot of the reggae mcs they tended to have a lot of confidence and um and i just saw myself a little bit more in the background but bristol has just been i just can't even it's just been so welcoming for me um, so I started to sing a little bit with an amazing uh, sound system called More Fire Sound. And uh, they're out of Bristol, and that's Dave Dunn, uh, D-U-N-N, that runs that. And we're actually doing a gig tomorrow. So that I kind of like cut my teeth there on the microphone, which was tricky at first, you know, because, you know, as a, as a woman in the industry as well, you know, you're sitting on a long line of consummate, you know, producers and, and MCs, and you're kind of like waiting for the mic to be passed, you know? And uh, finally, after six years, they do pass me the mic now. So I kind of feel like I've achieved something. So that's really, really in my background, um, sort of like jazz and blues influenced. Um, I didn't really think I was a songwriter. I didn't quite have enough pain. <laughs> I've got the pain now, so I can. And I also thought like, you know, a lot of songwriters were, were like tortured artists and I didn't really see myself as that. And so I just used to interpret songs, but with the reggae music, I don't know what happened. It just speaks to me and I just, I don't know where it comes from, but it just, it just comes out of me. So now I, I'm a kind of singer songwriter, I write songs for other people uh, and I just freestyle on a like more like a melody freestyle with lyrics rather than a straight MC. So I work well, really well juxtaposed with like proper, proper MCs that really give it the blah, blah, blah. And, um, and I sort of do the melody in between. So yeah, that's, that's sort of like where it comes from. And um, so now I find myself, I work with a, a lovely, beautiful um, uh, twin brothers, actually, uh, Jake um, and Simon Jones Jeffries, and they run a little outfit called Hard Pressed Hi-Fi. And they're like in their mid twenties. And so they get a the bit of the younger crowd coming through. Because I think the thing about reggae music is it's just all across the board. You know, I'm going to be 50 next year. I shouldn't say that, but, and so I, you know, a lot of the time we always think we're too old to do something. You know, even 30 year olds are kind of thinking, you know, you're too old to do it. You're never too old to start something. And I think with, with the reggae scene, especially with the dub roots reggae and jungle, 
it's just so welcoming and you've got kid, little kiddies we call them kiddies in bristol don't we and they're not obviously they're 18. so we have like some of the people that go there they're like 18 years old to like 70 years old so i, I love that about it it's really accessible as a genre and uh and obviously in bristol it's the place to be isn't it it's just it's just so uh it's not saturated it's just brilliantly um it's just got so many different types of people in there and all, we're all in it for the same reason really just to spread the love and spread the music so yeah that's how it started and so now i you know i do i do session work as well so sometimes someone might send me some beats and i'll jump on that and go down to the studio some brilliant studios here i, I couldn't i couldn't name them all but we've got abby morgan down at tesla productions she's married to junior morgan and he's an amazing uh, reggae artist straight out of uh I can't remember the name of the village in Jamaica, but it's a great one. And um, I've been using Cumber Center actually a lot there. Uh, Yuri Green's a great producer down there. So I've just been doing work with Tender and Dub. He's an amazing producer as well, big him up. And uh, we're just so many different people, just, just people just really willing to just get together and just see what we can do. So I'm just really enjoying the ride, to be honest. Um, we're doing a little event tomorrow, actually, um, down in Owen Park. I think it's known as the Chelsea Park. And it's behind the Eastern Community Centre. And that's run by Morefire Sound. And uh, we run every third Friday at Eastern Community Centre. And it's £5 entry. And it's just like it, it's just a really great thing to do, isn't it? I think a lot of the people that I work with, are, you know, money would be great. Money's, money's like a bonus these days. But we do it for the love of dub really and and just getting more and more people excited about that because the sound systems and how they're built and the culture of the sound system you know i'm learning a lot from from great great teachers like ranking snoopy uh, and his name's norson and uh he's just kind of taking me under his wing really he's like not one of the elders he's not much older than me but just really open to for teaching people what this is about you know these are hand-built sound systems which i really enjoy that as well you know there's all this camaraderie and like oh which kind of widget have you got what have you got there and i'm i'm just learning i'm just really happy to sort of like learn along the way you know um so yeah i'm really enjoying it <laughs> how did you kind of transition from like mc into the more melodic sides was there like any like musical training or was there a certain influence on it on you for that um not really as, as i said um I probably didn't put that across very well, but I'm not I'm not an MC at all, but I have always been into the melody. The melody always comes through first for me and the lyrics later. So I'm not really a lyricist, although people say I like your lyrics. You know, you get these people who just spit these lyrics out and I'm like, excuse me, excuse me, like Felix Luke and you know, like so many of the greats out there right now just doing that and I'm like, I'm not worthy. But actually what I bring to the table is is very different, but it's still very useful. So I think that I needed to just get over myself in a way. It's a confidence thing, isn't it? And um, but uh, I think like I'm just really grateful to people like Morfire Sound and Dave Dunn because although I'm I, I'd never been, nobody knew about me. Nobody knew my name on the scene. It's Emma V. I, I go under the name of Emma V. And um, so he he like gave me the platform really to uh, to start singing and i made a lot of mistakes you know it's cringeworthy to be honest luckily none of it was recorded <laughs> but um and it, and it just allowed me to just go you know what sod it I, this is what i do and i need to be more confident about it but i'm not like naturally i am a confident person i used to be a barrister <laughs> i know i can make a good coffee as well but um so I've, I'm used to speaking in public. I'm used to being confident for other people. But, you know, like it is in life, sometimes what we can do for ourselves, we, it's hard to do for ourselves. We can do it for others first. So so I think that transition from speaking in public in court really, really helped me to to not be afraid. But, but really, when you're putting your soul out there, these are your lyrics, this is your life, and often it's your... Uh, let's say pain that comes through that you can transmute into into loving energy and I think that that was the turning point for me to realize that I am good enough without people going you're really great you're really great it's just a really weird thing confidence isn't it it's kind of like it's like you you know you can appear to be really confident and you can have one bad gig with one bad sound and you just think I'm at the, what am I doing you know uh, it happened to me the other day and uh I've, I listened to it back just for my own. I was just like hiding, like, oh, this is terrible. But 
but you know you, you just have to keep you just have to keep going and keep going and um yeah i just really enjoying it now chomping at the bit to get out there <laughs> it's really exciting well yeah. i think what's interesting about your story is like having getting into the network and the community was kind of really important yeah you getting into it yeah um i think that speaks volumes especially about the bristol scene absolutely yeah absolutely i can't really <clears throat> because in london for example i mean i was living there 20 21 years and some obviously it's reggae is going off in london and always has been we've got nicole finity we've got kane fm we've got joel wadada breen you know with evolution of dub and um you know dub tastic music and uh and all the people there bill tastic and everyone else and they were doing passing clouds and there's a lot of music going on but what i found was difficult in london it was just it is such a it's such a massive place it was really difficult to say for example i thought of a tune in my head and i was like right i need a melodica player i, I once spent like two or three hours trying to find a melodica player and then they were like yeah there's one in wimbledon and literally i was relating this story the other day in the in the chelsea pub and sitting outside with a fire and i was saying and you know and it was really hard to find the melodica and someone shouts melodica and literally three blokes pulled melodicas out of their <laughs> jackets you know like so I was like, yes, I've arrived. <laughs> it was beautiful. But I really think it is something about the Bristol community. London has got a community, we know that. But if you live in Camberwell, that's your community. You live in Islington, that's your community. Brixton, here, it's like all these little places are all sort of like, they're all in one place. And so it's just so much easier. So I think that the warm embrace of Bristol and, and people just, you know, people who are really you know, like ranking Snoopy, you know, like Unique Star and people like a Blackout, but they've got open arms for me. And I'm like, mate, I'm just humbled by it because I think that sometimes in London, it's a little bit more cliquey and maybe that's just my own experience. But um, yeah, so I think you're right there to point that out. It is, it is a unique town. It's a unique city for that. I think we've got Bristol, Brighton, London. It's like some kind of weird Bermuda Triangle type thing, you know, where everyone is. But I'm just I'm just blessed to to be accepted in a way by by the people that have do this genre. And it's not about being white or black or whatever. But you know, you gotta be really I really take that very seriously, um, in terms of black culture, because what the f do I know about it? I'm a white girl sitting here with my privilege, but but yet yeah, people have, we talk about that a lot as well. And I think that it, it it's important to realise that you know, sometimes you're going to get some places where they, they might not want you. But I don't think it's a race thing. I don't really, I've never experienced any racism here. But I'm just very careful about that and about the history of black culture here. You know, with Colston's uh, toppling of the statue, um, there's a beautiful uh, guy called Mac Dunlop. And um, he's got a thing called the Piano Lounge. And he's just wrote this beautiful, exceptional poem and sent it me. Uh, with some really experimental beats and it wasn't reggae or anything and i just i just came out with it you know the melody and that came out um just after tolston uh, tolston who's he <laughs> spit my words colston just after the statue toppled we brought that track out and it's called night and day girl and i don't know i was just really proud to be part of that but again i was very conscious that it came from from me and not some of my black sisters who, you know, who who are equally as good. But I don't want to make this whole thing about race, but I think it's important to mention it, you know, um, especially in this day and age, and people aren't really aware of of uh, Bristol's culture and what it's built on. It's a tricky one, isn't it? It's that you've got to be aware of it, but then kind of like get, get, get through it and just get on with it. But um, I'll always be aware of it because my, my, my sister and brother are both half Jamaican and my, you know, I've been brought up in a kind of like reggae culture with my uncle and his never-ending cousins and all the parties and I was never made to feel any different but um, I'm still aware of it and I know that it, it it's important for me to just keep that in my heart uh, you know until things change and then we can all just get on with it you know but hopefully that will be soon we've seen a lot of changes as well aren't we with regard to that and people are a lot more aware of um, you know even like the changing of I live I live up just the, the road from a girls school called Colston Girls School and I think they've they've changed the name of that now as well. It's a fine line, isn't it? We need to remember, but we need to forget at the same time. But if we don't have these things there, 
Um, I mean, I agree the, the statue should have gone. It was brilliant. I was there at the time. Um, it was just really funny. I just remember looking at the um, Google Maps and they and they put him in the <laughs> they put him in the river like ten minutes after. It was like yes, mate, <laughs> brilliant. It was brilliant. I think that trial's still ongoing, isn't it? For the for those people that were uh, that were accused, but we are all the Colston Four, aren't we? At the end of the day, I feel we. I feel like crying. I feel. I just feel very passionate about um, black rights, and I and as a lawyer, I was I worked um, for. I was a volunteer lawyer for Medical Foundation Freedom from Torture that helped uh, people from other countries who were who were claiming asylum. So we were. We worked alongside doctors and um, we provide independent uh, legal advice in terms of uh, medical legal reports. So I saw a lot of and heard a lot of uh, stuff about that that was quite traumatic. And a lot of it was just about being black or just about being gay or just about being this. And I think it, across the board, it's the same issue, isn't it? It's it's like treading on people whose rights have been taken away for hundreds of years. I mean, 400 years, how many years? I mean, a lot of years, eh? But um, but like, it's not a negative, it's a positive really, isn't it? It's like to just be aware of it and just and just try and try and make a difference, not by fighting things. I don't really think fighting things uh, works. It sounds a bit mad that, doesn't it? But um, it's like, I think sometimes when you resist things, they persist. So I think you have to just sort of uh, just it sounds a bit cheesy, but instead of fighting things like hatred with, with with more hatred or fighting them, and I think the energy is just to just ignore it and carry on doing what you're doing with love and heal yourself. And then, because that's the whole thing about my lyrics and my and the way, the way I'm singing, it's like about I've learned a lot about my dark side, my shadow side, and I'm trying to. It's a never-ending journey. <laughs> So I'm trying to uh, keep doing that and just spreading the love from my side and just shining and saying it's all right to shine and letting others do the same, you know. So so it's not really about fighting all these issues. I know you've got to go and protest and I know you've got to fight stuff. You can't just allow it. But really in terms of quantum physics even, in terms of like energy, frequency and vibration, it is about allowing things for them to change. And I really believe that like war and poverty and racism, I think they are technically things called pendulums which will always be there because mass consciousness feeds them and the media feeds them you know the television we're all we're all in this fear-based thing even through covid and whatever so i think that the only thing to do is build new pendulums and they're like of love and or like peace or like you know unity you know um so yeah and so reggae's got that all over it really with the with the holy trinity and all, all, all that so I'm all up for a bit of that. <laughs> I was going to ask as well, like, how do you approach your songwriting and your lyric writing? It'd be interesting to hear. Do all these themes and topics that you can yeah. feed into it? Get really wasted now, I'm only kidding. Um, what I, <laughs> it's weird, right? Because sometimes I can just be walking down the street. I get a tune in my head, so I have. Uh, so I get my little. It's not very technical get my little voice notes thing and, and get on it like that. I think that ultimately I don't set out to write tunes to heal the world or anything, but 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 the the melodies, the harmonics of the melody, I think that they're they I don't really understand frequencies and everything else, but people tell me that the freak I mean the best compliment I got was from a woman who said that my voice was healing. And it, and it kind of like it was the first time that I realized that you know, because right, mate, I just really, I really battled with, I love singing and, and I sing all the time. I've been singing since I was a little girl, you know, church choirs, um, you know, all of that. But I didn't have the ego to go with it. I didn't need to, I didn't need to be famous. I didn't want, I found it difficult to go look at me and stuff. I did, I, I definitely have an ego in other ways, but not on stage. So, so for me, it was just like, what, what am I doing it for? I don't need to do it on stage, do I? I say to my friends, I don't need to get a gig. I don't need to, I sit with my piano over there and I'll just have a little smoke or whatever, or a cup of tea or and just jam. But pe more and more people said, no, Emma, you need to do this because we need to hear your voice and you, this, you've got a talent, so you need to get out there and do it. So I battled actually with that aspect of it, you know, like, why am I doing this? Who am I doing it for? And actually someone said like, mate, you know, 
you can actually heal people with your lyrics you can heal people with your energy you can feel it you know because i think that like in a way i've always been about trying to change things and i think any any good person hopefully wants to do that and that's why i set out to be a lawyer in the beginning because <laughs> i thought i could change things but hey it, it turned out I had a bit of a conscience, so I had to leave that profession. <laughs> now, I have to say most of the barristers I know, especially my teacher and all-time good friend, Deborah Morris, has a conscience. Uh, but, you know, working within the strict remit of the law, you can't really change things. And I thought, well, okay, I'll be a journalist and I'll change things that way. And they're like, hang on, Murdoch's media, maybe not. And I was like, oh, I'll be an activist and I thought no because I got right I got bang into Buddhism and I was like that's not going to change anything so really this was all that was left mate <laughs> so it wasn't really a choice it kind of chose me you know so but um, I'm just so passionate about it and just get excited about um I've never really talked about it before so thank you and and like I said I'm dressed for radio because I thought it was a podcast <laughs> but um yeah I'm just I'm just passionate about how do we sort the world out you know and i think it's through it, it's it's music music is you know i think a lot of the songs if you think about it a lot of the songs on the radio and they're about heartbreak and, and they're and they're a lot about um things that have gone wrong and they're the biggest sellers aren't they because a lot of people have been heartbroken and you have to find something that that's a common denom denominator for everyone but i think that just sort of perpetuates this this feeling of lack or this feeling of abandonment or whatever it is you're going through so with the reggae music i know that there are some songs like that but i just think that the reason i ended up doing lyrics like that was not really a choice it just must have been an accumulation of my whole life up to this point and then i was like I have this and people are going that's healing and then it just started coming out more and more you know um but i'm definitely not a lyricist i mean my lyrics are quite simple uh, but they all say the same thing because because like I kind of feel like I've got some of the answers now instead of the questions so I feel like I'm a little bit more qualified to just to just like tell people I don't tell them that how it is but you know and just about nature and all that I've written a song uh, with Tendra in, in Dove recently it's not out yet but it's just about how we can learn from nature about about the path of least resistance you know sometimes we go to a situation and we try and tackle it to the ground you know we try and struggle to work out what it is because a lot of us are quite logical you know audio digital i think they call it in nlp um but but really water finds a way through the path of least resistance so we just look at the look at the rivers and see what they're saying and that and i know it sounds a bit hippy diffy and a bit woo woo but it's quantum physics at the end of the day right so <laughs> who'd have thought we've been talking about quantum physics right now but yeah so i think that's i think that's where it comes from and that's why i write the songs that i do like it's half choice and it's half um just just what i've been through in life and i mean that that's got a big um that's probably number one i've been through everyone goes through stuff don't they and uh, i've been through quite a lot in the last uh say seven years and I've used that I've turned it around and I've tried to transmute that pain into a different kind of energy and that's alchemist uh, alchemists isn't it alchemism is that a word so yeah I think I think like in answer to that question with the longest answer ever it's a, it's a mixture of like my my history my pain <sighs> and also just the fact that I think people I think it's possible to heal people through music yeah whether it's the tone of the music or the lyrics or just for me sound system culture is about the dance it's about the music and um and i hate to say it because i probably sound like somebody's mum i am somebody's mum but there is you know i think we're always going to have drug culture aren't we in a, in a in a dance culture but um i think with a with a reggae sound system we've seen a lot less of it now and i think that's beautiful you know, some of our bars, we don't even sell alcohol. We've got Ital food, you know. You know, mm -hmm. I'm vegan and I'm like, oh, a little strum as a guitar there. But I'm not like saying everyone else has to be. But I think if you're just around people like that and get their energy and you can see that they're dancing all night and you're going, what are you having? You're going, go over, mate. <laughs> oh, it's coffee, actually. But um, so, yeah, I think it's like a mixture of stuff. <laughs> For sure. There's, there's a lot of different things I could unpack there. But I think like you know music is just so pure as an art form and that yeah. like it's not like 
all these other things where there's like rules and things you can abide by you can do whatever you want in music yeah um, and i think like all genres have got that in common you know like yeah there is these stereotypes but actually like whatever gig you go to it brings together people from all walks of life yeah no no absolutely yeah, that, that's that's bang on and i think you know i do go to other gigs as well and i go to some uh like garage even techno i used to work on doors and techno parties um probably employed me because i didn't really like techno and so i was always on the door but um yeah it really does and, and i think i come from a culture of squat parties as well back in the day tyson street studios and all that and uh you know like new age traveler sort of movement um my father's no no got that wrong my daughter's father um used to run a thing at glastonbury uh, called lost vagueness and that was like 16 acres at glastonbury it was just before shangri-la in fact a lot of the people that are in shangri-la were, were part of that and they were all consummate creatives to start with but it's it's all about that isn't it like the festival scene uh the new age traveling scene even the squat parties even the illegal raves you get such a myriad of different type of people and you learn from them all you know i am just continually surprised by the by the wisdom of the youth i was like t talking to 19 year old like guys or or boy or girls about quantum physics and spirituality and i'm like mate i'm still getting wasted at your age you know so I, it actually inspires me <laughs> to think that that like we can learn from each other and there's not so much division in the, like there is in some mainstream clubs i mean maybe i'm wrong i don't go to a lot of them at the, at, as it as it happens but um i think a lot of the mainstream clubs in bristol are not mainstream in a way i think there's a new venue opened um lost horizons that's it and there's another there's another mm. one there's so many and they're 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 built i think kay dunnins has started running that one she she runs she's the creative director at uh shangri-la and she's created a space where yeah they might get really high-end amazing acts but you get the same type of crowding that you would get anywhere else and so there's that yeah i really like that it's a it's a good point isn't it that the that music is accessible to everyone it really is you know whether it be on a radio or through youtube or any of the social media outlets it's 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 uh it's sort of free at the moment and available to everyone well not i mean we, we need to make money please buy our records but you know what i mean it's it's accessible isn't it we've got radios some of us i don't know where mine is but yeah so i think there's that accessibility and that and that joining of spirits and that and that like group healing really because you know i i don't know what what else people go out for but i think especially with the current climate people are chomping at the bit to get back to and it isn't about getting out and going out and getting drunk. It's so it's connection. It, it it's connection that you know isolation kills people, not necessarily disease. It, it's connection that we've all we've all been like, oh mate, you know, we've missed it, haven't we? <laughs> Touch a little nose there on the screen, but we've missed it though. And um, I think music brings us back back to that. And and I think the more people putting on these gigs, whether or not they be illegal or not, I think it's a great thing. <laughs> perfect um it's been really great chatting we're nearly out of time already I can't no believe worries it's flown by. Um, you did tell me to give long answers just in case anyone <laughs> thinks shut up will you <laughs> um but is there anything else you'd like to leave the audience with as we close <laughs> um not really no just to say look thank you so much for coming to these sound system events and more fire sound system more fire sound system more fire sound system <laughs> And big up the ranking Snoopy, all right, because I'm really, really blessed to know him. And thank you very much to yourself as well for inviting me on. No worries. Appreciate it. It's been great. Thanks no for watching, everyone. See you thank next you. time. Bye. <laughs>